Okay. Um, thank you for joining the webinar. And I know that uh, for some of you, this was definitely short notice, but uh, it was actually uh, uh, somewhat successful. Uh, when I sent out the information, we wound up uh, having 102 people register for the event. And uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, I was looking to find maybe three speakers, but I found seven speakers that were interested in speaking about project management and uh, their challenges and successes as a uh, project management professional. And, and uh, I'm kind of excited to, to be part of this. And um, the interesting thing is that I, I have known, met each one of the speakers personally, except for one, and all of them have some, some really uh, great experience in project management and uh, some, some little stories to tell. And I'm not going to uh, uh, delay anything. We're going to get things going very quickly. I'm going to have the speakers actually uh, introduce themselves. If you have any questions, uh, send them into the question box, and I'll, I'll take a look at them. And uh, as we uh, go through the, the various introductions and so on, uh, I'll see if I can address some questions up front. And also, uh, after each speaker has had some a few moments to talk about themselves, then we're going to open it right up for for questions. So we're going to get started in just a second. Um, Kevin Martin, uh, hello, Kevin. I know you're out there. He says, hello, world. OK, great. Uh, Kevin is the uh, past uh, chapter president for the uh, uh, Alamo chapter in San Antonio, Texas. OK, yes, I'm glad to have uh, Kevin here. He's uh, also a, a great resource uh, in, in project management. So <clears throat> let me just get things started now. Uh, so the, the purpose of the webinar is, is to recognize two things. One is International Women's Day. Okay, and, and, and I have four daughters also, and I asked them to, if they could join this webinar also. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I've been surrounded by women my whole life and uh, learned a lot of things from, from uh, the women that I work with. And I have to say that when I worked at at and I had four uh, women managers, division managers, and I learned more from them about leadership than any of the men that I work for. So I'm giving you a little bit of a plug about uh, my experiences in working with women. You're going to hear from seven women who have uh, achieved a, a great deal of success in the profession of project management. Uh, some of them are, are project management professionals that work on projects. Some are, are business owners. Uh, some of them have held uh, significant positions in various corporations. And uh, it's, it's going to be a great session to find out a little bit more about um, what they do and what their, uh, their background is. Just a quick note, uh, this is actually being sponsored by the uh, Project Management Institute New York City chapter. And this is just a brief slide about some things that are coming up soon. Uh, March 21st, uh, PMI New York City chapter meeting with Carl Pritchard, the four C's of project communications. Uh, we have a, a corporate outreach event in a PMO series called Navigating the PMO Political Landscape, and that's on uh, the 10th of April. And we also have the PMI New York City Symposium, uh, Raise Your PMIQ. And the information can be found at uh, www.pminyc.org. OK, now um, with that, uh, I'm going to get started right away. I'm going to introduce very briefly, and then Sarah will introduce herself, just like all the other speakers will introduce themselves. Uh, our, our first speaker is Sarah, uh -huh. Sarah Shoot. And she is uh, speaking to us from London. And Sarah, I'm going to ask you to just start right in and tell us a little bit about yourself. And I'll advance the slides for you. And uh, it's all yours. Hey, uh, Frank, before you start, um, I'm not seeing your screen. I'm not sure if anybody else is. Oh, no. I'm fine. I've just brought up my own, my own slides that I sent to you just, just, in, just while you were talking to make sure I can talk properly. I'm happy to start. I can use my own slide deck. I don't know if you did any changes to it. If okay, not. let me see what's what's going on here. It's waiting to view the host. Okay, of there we go. Can you yeah. see the Can That's we see it. the screen now? Got it. There okay. You go. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I thought we were sharing the screen, so let me just start again. Um, our first speaker is Sarah Shute. She is speaking to us from London. And uh, Sarah, uh, 
we're happy to have you with us today. And let me turn it over to you and you can speak to our audience. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Frank. And good afternoon, verging on evening here in London in the UK. Okay, it's a beautiful day here. Our snow has melted, the spring is coming, and I'm really thrilled to have been invited to join this group. Um, six other wonderful women, such a diverse group uh, who have accomplished a variety of things across the project management industry. And for me, as uh, someone who is not a project management professional, that in itself is a magnificent achievement. Uh, I believe it shows what can be done when women push themselves forward uh, and they collaborate. So thank you to Frank for uh, enabling us to do just that uh, this evening. Um, I have a couple of slides prepared um, just to give you a flavor of what I've been involved in and where my life uh, has been and, and may go to and a few tips. So if we could move to the first slide, I'd be grateful. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I think the uh, animations are one by one. So those are now coming up on the screen one by one. So just to introduce myself to everybody, um, my background is not a pro as a project management professional. I'm a lawyer by, by trade. Um, uh, I specialize in construction and engineering projects, uh, particularly large infrastructure projects. Uh, and I have nigh on uh, 20 years practice now. Uh, I'm most proud of the fact that I have more than 10 years uh, work within industry so I'm an industry focused lawyer uh, and I believe passionately in the ability of uh, engineering, of construction uh, and of infrastructure and technology projects to change lives and to do great things and to have socially beneficial results. Uh, my passion uh, in, in making that happen is how law impacts on the project manager, uh, on all of you in your everyday roles. Um, I, I'm a firm advocate that the project manager takes the central role uh, in every type of project uh, and that runs across uh, size, uh, type and sector. Uh, I run a small company based in London in the UK. We have a, a global network of clients uh, and a global network of collaborators whom we can draw on. Um, I've established the business about four years ago. We just celebrated our fourth anniversary, actually. So I'm now working on uh, this time next year, we'll be having a big party to celebrate five years in business. I'm really proud of that. And I've worked really hard to get there. The practice I've developed, which I'm most proud of uh, in the last couple of years, is that I've developed a niche in the law as it applies to project management, uh, to the planning function and to the project controls function. Um, I'm a bit of a, a, a geek fan when it comes to technology and I'm very uh, passionate about the promotion and the use of technology. Um, uh, as far as our business goes, uh, I provide legal services to the industry sector uh, and also training workshops. And we try to be uh, what I call a whole life advisor. You can see there um, the sort of different steps that projects take uh, from uh, before the beginning, actually, uh, all the way through to the end and beyond the end. Uh, and that's what we try to do um, uh, here at Shooter Consulting. So that's a little bit from me. Oh, yes, and I do love working with PMI. Uh, I'm very lucky that I have some great collaborators in the PMI family all around the world. Uh, I'm particularly close to the New York branch. Um, I have business in New York, and it's been an absolute pleasure to develop a very fruitful and productive relationship with PMI New York City. So uh, a little bit about my experience of women in project management and law. So I see it as a, as a lawyer coming into projects more often than not. Uh, and I've met uh, a whole host of women over time, having uh, worked, as I say, pretty hard to establish my business. I have to say, uh, one can always do better. Of course, we, we, we can always do better in life, but we do tend to push ourselves pretty hard. Uh, over the past few years in particular, I have met some uh, very admirable uh, female project managers. And I like to make sure that I um, really take care of project managers on my jobs. I have found female project managers to be extremely good at their jobs. Um, 
it's not a it's not a man bashing forum, but I have to say that there are certain things about perhaps about how the female brain works um, that that have enabled certain women I've worked with to be uh, extraordinarily um, uh, successful and um, conscientious about their jobs. Uh, I like to think that women have an innate sense uh, of of planning. Um, we tend to be really good at managing our time. Uh, perhaps that comes from juggling families uh, and responsibilities. Uh, it certainly does in my case. Uh, and I have found that, um, like myself, uh, a lot of women who are very good at project management um, are good at the very uh, high level uh, visibility, the sort of blue sky stuff. And that is extremely important when it comes to being able to see projects uh, away from the minutiae uh, and to really see the uh, the trees and not just the wood. Uh, women I've worked with, I found, have a real sense of purpose. Uh, again, I think this uh, this links a lot in with being able to manage time. We're very purposeful. We get on with things, uh, and that's extremely helpful in the project management uh, arena. To not be bogged down by things unnecessarily, uh, and to be able to just get on with uh, just get on with the job in hand. Uh, can we move to the next one? Thank you. Yeah, coping with the unexpected. That is something which I have come across time and time again with uh, other ladies in the profession. Uh, we don't panic. We we get on with it. We we assess the situation, uh, and we're able to um, to to manage it sensibly and calmly. Uh, again, I, I don't know if it is an innate female uh, uh, side of things. Uh, I guess the flip side of that is we tend to be um, perfectionists and to perhaps push ourselves too much to achieve the perfect every time. Uh, I certainly feel like I have all of those traits. I'm definitely an overpleaser. Um, I think that probably comes with being a business owner as well to some extent. Um, but in the balance of things, I think all of of those qualities uh, are wonderful and they really help the project management profession to progress. Uh, I would say my top tip uh, is, is to remember your integrity. Um, again, this is something which has come from being a relatively recent business owner. It's my name on the, on the letterhead, it's my name on these slides, uh, it's my name which goes out to the world uh, and what I say, it goes to the heart of my integrity and that is your most valuable asset uh, as well. It's also your USP so that you can sell yourself going forward. Uh, now, I wanted to do um, a little bit of a look back, uh, being as I'm coming up to 20 years in practice, uh, and I thought it would be quite fun, um, hopefully fun, to, to say, what would I say to myself? I was looking in the mirror the other day and I thought, what would I say to my, my daughter who's coming up to eight when she is, she is 20 and she's you know embarking on life and choosing a profession and and uh, and all of those things so I had a few things which I wanted to just pick out uh, as being little bits of uh, life advice if you like uh, first of all uh, and I, I'm sure you've heard this before to not worry about making mistakes uh, I make mistakes all the time uh, and they do happen and we're all human and that's the that's the thing about perfectionism. However, I would say mistakes are rarely serious. They rarely lead to anything which is um, terribly problematic uh, and a real crisis. So try to be a bit more gentle on yourself when you do make mistakes. Uh, one thing I learned uh, quite hard when I was at law school, uh, and I've tried to apply this, and I'm not always very good at it, but I keep trying, is to say if you don't know the answer. It's okay to confess to not knowing something, and I have to do that with my clients all the time. What I do do is just be very straight about it and say, you know what, I'm really sorry, I don't have the answer at my fingertips, but I will commit to you to finding out what that answer is. And then I go and do it, and I do it brilliantly, and I blow their socks off. Um, being human, but not being superhuman. I think we all try and be superhuman these days. It's really hard, surrounded by social media and, and other things, and we can't help but compare ourselves to other people. But, you know, it's okay to have an off day. Um, one thing I have learned is to not pretend that it is actually an on day, because then it looks like you're not performing, even though you think you are. So I try to now just say to people, you know what, I'm not having a great day, just bear with me um, and I will 
come back tomorrow and it will be a whole lot better. Uh, look forward and not back. I'll definitely use experiences to, to shape your learning and also your healing. Um, I've had a few experiences in the past few years, which uh, as, a, as a novice uh, business owner, um, I've really had to learn from some of them, you know, quite, uh, quite soul searching in many ways and needed a little bit of time to, to get through that healing process. Uh, I try not to dwell on them, I think is, is my main message, but use it and then again, move on and, and say it's okay and I'm going forward, always going forward on these things. Uh, network like crazy. This is something that ladies I've come across are brilliant at, and I'm sure you are too. Um, one of the things I've done uh, in both being a lawyer and also working in industry is just to seek out those um, those peers, those collaborators, uh, people who you actually want to stay in touch with. We all make hundreds of contacts, and if you look in your LinkedIn, you've probably got you know several you're not too fussed about, um, and others who are useful from time to time. But really think about um, finding people who who you really resonate with uh, and who inspire you to do better. I found those incredibly supportive uh, in the down times. Search deep for a job you feel passionate about. Most definitely. Uh, I worked in private practice as a lawyer for six years in one of those big law firms where they work you like a donkey day in, day out. Uh, I then moved into industry uh, to become an in-house uh, lawyer, to be close to projects, to be with project managers and, and site people and, and making business happen. And that was a real change for me. I knew that I would be good at it. I knew that I wanted to do it and I knew I had to work hard at it. So for me, that made every morning um, a joy to get up for. I then decided to leave that and start my own business. So I'm, I'm now in another job that I feel passionate about. And that's a job that has my name on it, hence my point about integrity. And I would say that if you don't find that job, go and make it yourself. Um, it's very easy to say for sure, but I can tell you that I've done it. Um, I was brave. I stepped out of being an employee. I had two small children at the time. Um, and, uh, and I didn't have that regular income. I wasn't reckless about it. I did think about it, um, but I did take a measured risk. The the, the important bit being the measured. Um, uh, my last message is, yeah, good good luck to everybody. Um, I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate your uh, our uh, International Women's Day and uh, everybody to to stay safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me, Frank, and good luck to all the other ladies. Okay, Sarah, thank you very much. I know you have to leave, but uh, if you can stay with us for just a little bit in case somebody has any questions, and then send yes. me a note when you're when you're about to uh, to to leave us. Okay, um, I'm, I'm just going to show a real quick some some slides real quick here before we uh, go to our next speaker. These are the slides that you didn't see at the beginning. Uh, again, we're talking about perspectives uh, about success as a project manager, and I think that, that Sauer really, really hit on some very, very key points, and I'm sure that uh, our other speakers will, will uh, you know, uh, emphasize many of those points and bring up some new ones also, but uh, Sauer, we definitely appreciate your, your time being here, and uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to be asking Renee Adair to uh, uh, join us and uh, speak to us a little bit about her background and her business and, and her, her perspectives on, on, on success in project management. So Renee, if you are there and ready, uh, it's up to you. I am, thanks Frank. So uh, thank you Frank for inviting me. I think, um, and Sarah, what a wonderful story you have. I saw a lot of uh, similarities in, uh, in our experiences and things that you've experienced and uh, I really appreciate um, what you know the tips you had for everyone um, so this is just a little bit about myself um, Frank can you go to the next one I want to start there all right so um, I thought I would just share a little bit about my journey and then maybe share one of the project successes that I'm proud of and then just some tips um, for those who um, you know want to get involved in project management or, or even are already involved in project management um, so I got my degree in business management in, in uh, 91, and I started initially in a management consulting role, and it was a small firm, and, and we were uh, just getting our first network up and running, and so when we, you know, I was the liaison with the IT person, and so I had a 
got a real interest in the technical side. And so I moved into more of a technical role. I ended up getting my network, uh, C Netware CNE certification, if anybody remembers way back when, when Netware was popular. Um, so, and then I moved on uh, through the years and became the director over the IT organization and really enjoyed that and enjoyed the IT uh, side of the house. But in around 2009, um, I decided to, you know, kind of take a leap of faith and, and go a different direction. And I decided to get my PMP certification. And um, that has really just been a great career fit for me. Um, it really allows me to uh, blend my technical skills with my management capabilities and to work with people to help them solve business problems. Um, and I also really like being able to see the fruits of my labor, being able to complete a project and see the results and see that what I'm doing has value. So that was really important to me and, and something that uh, appealed to me about project management. Um, and then, you know, as I gained more experience as a project manager, I moved into our engineering portfolio and started a PMO there and eventually became the program director of our tier three um, telecom engineering market and also with some of the lar larger carriers as well and that's one of the stories I'm going to share with you all in just a minute a project we did there uh, and then lastly you know I took another uh, career turn uh, just recently in 2017 um, I now own my own business it's a training and consulting company and I, I find I really get to um, helps me support the advancement and enrichment of other project managers and just get to learn from a lot of different people and uh, just really been enjoying that role. Uh, I guess the next slide, Frank. So I just wanted to share, you know, a, a project that I worked on that I, you know, was really proud of. Um, so I don't know if you remember back in 2010, the we had the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act that uh, stimulated a lot of uh, broadband fiber grant projects. And I was uh, the program manager over uh, a very large project that we were doing. It took about five years to complete over 1,200 miles of uh, broadband fiber built into the to Washington State. Um, so I think this is one project that really just got to test every um, aspect of my project management skills. And it was, uh, you know, just a lot of different stakeholders. Um, you had the client and the government agencies, private landowners, contractors, uh, consultants, the community, it was just a, a wide range of uh, different stakeholders that you had to deal with and um, just extremely rewarding. You, uh, really, I think, brought home how important communication is um, as a project manager uh, and your ability to kind of uh, be able to distill down what each stakeholder needs to uh, know about the project and keep them informed appropriately. Um, you know, in the, in the engineering world, uh, my teams were primarily, and in construction as well, my teams were primarily male. And I, you know, not being an engineer myself, I had to really invest in continuous learning and, you know, come up to speed with a lot of new technology. So I really appreciated that. And, you know, just uh, I think the biggest thing was my value to community. I, I got to see something that when built was going to be extremely beneficial to rural communities. And, you know, that was very important to me. Again, like I said, to be able to feel like what I'm doing with my career is, is providing value. Um, I guess the next slide, Frank. And so I guess, you know, my biggest tips for you, you know, thinking back on my uh, first job and how I progressed through my career, the biggest thing that resonates with me is finding mentors, uh, male or female, just find people that um, are successful in the field or, in, you know, and soak up everything you can from them. Um, I've had a lot of great women mentors in my life as well as men. And that is, you know, just something that has endured with me. Um, also, I would suggest, you know, allow yourself to, to take risks, to be a little daring. 
Um, don't be afraid to have a voice. Uh, I know for myself, I'm fairly introverted and, and risk averse. So it's always been a little bit of a struggle for me to, to step out of my comfort zone. And But I've found that some of the most rewarding experiences I've had have been the result of taking a little bit of risk. So just wanted to encourage uh, all of anyone on the call to you know join any local professional groups, uh, either technical groups or project management groups, you know, take some time to volunteer, giving back and mentoring someone else is a, a wonderful uh, experience and just continue to grow your education and, and your skills. And I'd love to connect with any of you. Um, I've got my contact information there. Always uh, excited to share experiences with other, other people. So uh, thank you, Frank, for the opportunity. Okay, Renee, um, <clears throat> I'm going to, actually, this question is for everyone, and we'll, we'll get back to this a little bit later, but um, the question came in that says, uh, what does it take for a woman to lead well? Is it very different from men? So uh, I'm going to ask all of my speakers to, to think about that for a minute, but Renee, would, what, would, what would be your immediate reaction to that question? What does it take for a woman to lead well? Is it very different from men? Well, I think for me, I was both in IT and in engineering and construction and in very male dominated areas. And I think what it took for me is just to be able to prove myself, prove that I understood, you know, what they're talking about and then I can I can step up and lead and take charge. Uh, and then just being able to develop those relationships. Um, I don't know if it's that much different for a man, but, you know, but go ahead. I was just going to add, I, I, I would agree with everything that you just said. Um, I'm quite a small woman um, and I have found that, uh, and I look, and I have quite a baby face as well. Um, and I've definitely had to be mindful of that, as silly as it might sound. Um, uh, I've definitely had to know my stuff uh, mm -hmm. and to quite self-assured about it without being overly aggressive, which is not a nice trait for anyone, man or woman, but it is seen to be particularly um, distasteful in a woman. Uh, we can debate the rights and wrongs of that some other time. Um, but I, I've definitely wanted to be uh, confident that I have done my homework uh, and explored all the different options before going into to meetings or onto site or anywhere else uh, to give both myself the confidence that I know what I'm delivering um, but also to come across uh, as being uh, knowledgeable and uh, you know helpful to people okay I'm going to uh, ask uh, Lisa to, to step up and, and say a few words and I have uh, Lisa's just got a few slides here and uh, Lisa is a is a trainer a consultant and then I know that she just took on a uh, a very interesting new job hopefully Lisa you'll you'll talk a little bit about that uh, particular job that you have and uh, it's all yours thank you very much Frank and thrilled to be here uh, I'm gonna jump in I'm gonna try to be concise which is not always easy for me i'm just going to give you a very quick overview i um i'm the oldest of three by two minutes my twin brother and i and my younger sister lived a very idyllic childhood on the ocean uh in a very large and boisterous italian family so perhaps just by that alone i learned how to be pushy and um uh, and figure out how to get things done as a result uh, what you're seeing here is my greatest accomplishment, my two children who are no, no longer children, although sometimes I will refer to my son affectionately as my man-child. Um, that's my daughter, Kaylee. She's 29. It hurts me to say that. And my son is 20, uh, 24. I have been, um, the, I am the founder of Your Project Office. We're a Boston-based company. It has been in place. We just celebrated our 11th year. Uh, I jumped the corporate cliff 11 years ago to start this organization. Uh, had an idea and a, and a premise that it might work. Didn't overthink it. Jumped off the corporate cliff and uh, pleased to say that there's been no crash landing. If you think about 11 years ago, it was just around the time that the U.S. economy absolutely tanked. 
And one of the greatest lessons that I learned in that journey is I thought I would just singularly post a uh, sign outside my door and do some consulting. The consulting dollars dried up uh, almost instantaneously as I walked away from the security of my nice corporate job. And I learned very quickly that I needed to reinvent myself in order to survive. So that was lesson number one. And I quickly changed from consultant to trainer, became a registered education provider. And for the first four years of our business, we literally uh, did most of our, most of our client engagements were corporate and um, public training events. That was number one. Uh, your project office still is in existence today. And then I had the uh, a rare opportunity uh, about six months ago, one of our clients that we had been working with is, uh, offered me the opportunity to stay on permanently with them. It's a company called Foundation Medicine. Um, I've always spent my career in healthcare, and uh, this is an opportunity where uh, this company, where we combine genomic profile products and data services, where we actually generate information that can help doctors match their ca cancer patients to more individualized or personalized medicine in order to both uh, cure their cancers, as well as to help pharma companies accelerate the development of new therapies. So it's a pretty cool place to be. I'm in the most enviable position, which is I allow to keep my toes in my current company um, that I began, and also uh, am in foundation medicine where I'm responsible for developing a new program project management office for them. I've had the opportunity to write three books. Um, I, I, uh, I equate it to having children, the first birth, your ignorance is bliss, and you go to have the second delivery and you think, what the heck am I thinking of by doing this again? Um, so each book has been a labor of love. And, and I do remember thinking about writing a book for a number of years and then being in a networking event. And when it was my turn to introduce myself, I blurted out to the crowd that I was about to embark on writing a book. And once I made that a public declaration, it became real. So for those of you who are on the fence contemplating what you might or might not want to do, uh, I would suggest please blurt out what you need to have happen and it will make it real. It's similar to those of us in project management. When we document it, it becomes real. If you can click again, Frank, there might be another photo or two that are out there. Um, there is so there there i am speaking i also do uh and frank and i our paths have crossed over the years um but we also do uh seminars world trainings as well so i do i still hold a contract with pmi and, and have um, the luxury of tra traveling the globe on their behalf the last photo that you're going to bring up frank is what i do in my free time i'm a competitive ocean rower um, that requires not only individual endurance um, but also uh, recognizes the collective power of the team. Uh, we go out in almost all elements uh, from May through November in the Northeast where the ocean is cold and rough and, uh, and we do competitive racing. Our, our hardest race that we train that we've started now for is midsummer. It's a 22 mile open ocean uh, row, which is pretty cool. If you go to the next slide, I'm just going to share a couple of my tidbits before I, I turn over the mic to um, the next very talented and engaged woman who's behind me. I'm going to share a couple of things that might be a little bit different than what you're going to hear from others. First and foremost, um, be brave, take risks. I do not have any formal credentials, so I, I honor and I admire everyone who has invested extraordinary time and um and focus to achieve the credentials that they have. I am, for those of you who saw 60 Minutes a couple of weeks ago, I am an older version of Jennifer Lawrence, who uh, quit school in her middle years of schooling. I didn't quite do that. I do have some college behind me, but I do not have any formal credentials, and I have bust the stereotypes, um, albeit it's, it's a number of years ago when I started that, but mentally was raised in an environment where my parents convinced us that you can do whatever you want to do. And I believe that that is absolutely the case. So be brave, take the risks. Nothing beats the experience that you bring to the table more than anything else. If you show the next quote, Frank, it talks about um, 
what we need to do to stay in the game. So be tenacious, have grit. Um, I would say for folks who ask me, how do you equate your quote unquote success? I would say both personally and professionally, it's the ability to get up every morning, dust myself off and do it again, no matter how difficult the previous day or the front facing uh, opportunity or challenge may be. Our ability to be able to be resilient and continue to do it uh, allows us the ability to give one more opportunity. I despise the comments or the phrase, think out of the box. I believe that when we talk about thinking out of the box to be creative in what we're doing, we actually place ourselves stronger within the box. When you think about the shape of a box, it's big, it's heavy, it has boundaries. And when people say to us, just think out of the box, you'll come up with the great new answer. It puts extraordinary pressure on us. When we throw the box away completely, it provides no boundaries and we have a wide open landscape of what we can do and how we can do it. And lastly, let's always remember that the more complicated the environment is, the simpler we need to be to make the process, the product, the outcome tangible and actually real. Some will suggest that one hour of effective planning saves over 200 hours of execution errors. And for those of us who live and breathe in the project program management space, that is music to our ears. So with this, I believe that being here with these talented women is a great place to be, but I will also close with the comment and the sharing that I am a true tomboy and never have I ever believed that there is a formal distinction between men and women. I believe that we are equal and all capable of doing exactly what we choose to do. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. Um, we had a, a comment from, from Kimberly. She said, I love rowing. It's on my bucket list. Okay. Go for it, Kimberly. <laughs> I've been only doing it for six years and I'm totally addicted. Go for it. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, Okay. All right. Um, uh, Lisa, before we move on to the next speaker, uh, I actually put together a couple of uh, poll questions. So um, what I'm going to do now, before I bring on Yael from, from the New York City PMI chapter, uh, I'm going to attempt to put up a poll. So let me see if I can uh, make this happen. Uh, and if I can't, then we will definitely try something else. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so here's the uh, the poll question that just came up. Uh, it is, uh, the question is project management. Uh, let me see if I can bring this up bigger. Project management is recognized as a core competency in my organization. Okay, so I'm launching this, this poll question. And I'm just curious about uh, what you uh, believe uh, is the case here in your organization. Right now we have 73 people attending this webinar. So I'm just gonna give this a couple of seconds to see what, uh, what we have here. And, and the reason I'm asking this question is, is because that I think Lisa as a, as a trainer, um, Renee as a trainer, in fact, in fact everyone uh, on the panel that we have speaking here has probably had some experience in, in training and teaching and trying to uh, promote the value of project management. Uh, and uh, PMI has been in existence since 1969. And, and here we are that um, in terms of if it's recognized as a core competency, we only see 53% uh, of the people that are in this particular group, uh, which is telling us that we have a ways to go yet. And, and that's a challenge for for both men and women in the profession, that we have to do something to show people what the what the value of the uh, the profession is. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm going to go to a second question. Okay. Let's see. Okay, the question is coming up right now. And the question is that uh, project management is a great opportunity for women as a career choice. Uh, 
Okay, so it looks like that we have a, a, a pretty good agreement here that it is something to consider. 81% uh, of our uh, attendees are strongly agreeing and 21% are somewhat agreeing. Uh, there are no disagreements being registered, so uh, that's a good indication. So I think that uh, the, 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 the information provided by our speakers today will also help encourage people. Uh, now I see we have 3% uh, that somewhat disagree. And again, I, I think that there's lots of opportunities for improvement. And, and as long as we have people like Sarah, Renee, Lisa, Yael, Karen, Yan Ping, and Rose, uh, that we're going to make uh, some, some progress. OK, um, I'm going to now bring up our, our next speaker. And that is Yael from the uh, PMI uh, New York City chapter. OK, and Yael, uh, if you'd like to say a few words, uh, you are now on. Uh-oh. Okay, you, sh you, sh you should be good now. Your, your audio was off, but you are now good to go. Oh, so I'll start from the beginning. I just want to say good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Frank, for inviting me. Uh, this is a great lineup. I've heard the stories of ladies before me, and a lot of the comments resonate with my own experience, and I find that very validating. Uh, my background, uh, so first of all, I'm currently the VP of Communications and Technology at the Project Management Institute of New York City. It is a pro bono role and I'm passionate about it. Um, I find it empowering in terms of the ability to bring, bring it all together. And I'll explain more about that. My background has been in financial services, in project management, and I came about that quite by accident. I uh, graduated uh, undergrad a while ago, I'd say about 25 or 30 years ago. And at the time, uh, the school I attended, and that's Columbia, I had, was just accepting women for the first semester for the first time. So uh, I, I transferred into the school. So I was in my junior year. And what I'm getting at is that in most of my classes, I was the only woman. So I was an economics major, interested in urban planning, and in most of the classes, the only woman. Uh, I found that uh, quite odd, having come from a high school environment where we had mostly girls. I went to an all-girls school. So I had to learn how to navigate between the world of all women to a world of all men. And I learned over the years that being able to do that actually is a skill and an important one. In most of my career, I'm also still the only woman in the room. So I'll, I'll start by saying when I, when I finished school, my first job was at Travels Insurance Companies. Um, at the time, still very male dominated, but they were looking to open a broker dealer. And uh, in order to do that, they really needed people who had training experience or were comfortable in that nurturing environment, working with, insurance brokers, um, that, that, that sort of skill set. And I found it very empowering at the time because although the men could go out and sell a product and or sell the idea, that's what they were doing, uh, what would happen is when it came time for delivery, sometimes quite often they were missing dates. And I was in marketing at the time and was told at the time that the problem was in operations. Operations can't deliver. So I thought, that's really interesting. I love solving problems. Let me move from marketing into operations to find out why they can't deliver on time. And in, in that experience, got my broker dealer license. And uh, that began my career in operationalizing processes. I, I went from insurance into banking. Same story at the time. Uh, the trading was all done manually. It's, it's hard to believe that now. But there was no system to automate trades, so they were all written on tickets. And then a word process data entry into systems and batch processes later in the afternoon and through the evening. Um, so I learned that if I was willing to listen to a need, a customer need, and translate that so that an, a group that could automate it could do the work, 
then I had a little niche and that could make me quite valuable. So that has, that has been really my focus or what I've done is translate customer needs into a product or a service. And I did that at Citibank. I did it at KPMG when they were looking to uh, consolidate the data center because it, it actually was decentralized across the U.S. and in 150 different offices. They needed to consolidate that into one office in, in New Jersey. And um, what, what I found, the, the, I, I just wanted to answer the question in terms of what I found to be the biggest challenge about this and also the biggest achievement was that when you're working from the business side, business doesn't necessarily appreciate or understand the journey that IT goes through. And so moving from marketing into the business, into IT, into IT I, I, I noticed when I got to the IT side that the IT side didn't seem to appreciate or understand or necessarily empathize. And I want to say care because that sounds a bit callous, but didn't empathize with, uh, with the business with what users go through. So oftentimes applications would be built, uh, services would be built that were probably quite elegant from an automation perspective, from an IT perspective, but they weren't necessarily what the customer needed. So my, uh, I would say that my biggest achievement has been being able to navigate that, flow chart that out and explain it. And uh, I don't mind doing that, which is why it, it's helpful. I, what I should add is that I used to run a help desk when I was at Citibank. And what I found is that we would hire, we would hire tech, very highly technical people into that role that absolutely knew how to, how to do the work. But they didn't like explaining their answer over and over and over again. They found that boring. So by the time they were on the job for about three months, they were completely, they were, they were completely I would say disillusioned and didn't want to stay in the role. So finding people that wanted to do that, I'll, I'll be honest with you at the time, at, at, where you have to find women. Women didn't mind taking the time to explain how to do the work. Uh, they wanted, they cared about the problem. Uh, and I, not, not to bash men in any way, but I did find that, that to be a trait um, over the years. Currently, what I do is, um, oh, I just want to explain the journey. I went from Citibank to KPMG to PwC. Um, what I love about project management is that there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you're, it's, it's quite easy, easy to see the achievement over a short period of time, be it um, be six months or 18 months. It doesn't take five, or it doesn't take three to five years to see whether you're successful in the delivery. So, um, and also, most recently, though, I've noticed that the, the area, this field has become quite crowded and uh, of interest. And so to get to the next level, we need to go beyond just delivering on customer needs. We need to be able to um, anticipate what the needs will be, to manage risk very well. And so I have started to, that journey into moving into risk management. And uh, PMI, uh, Project Management Institute, does offer certification for that as well. So although I have my CRIS for my SOC, I am considering getting one from PMI as well, just to make sure that you just kind of uh, connect the dots completely there. So just in closing, I wanted to say that I, I agree with the comments I heard before me that to be successful, uh, it does require wanting to solve problems, so being a good a problem solver, um, wanting to make a difference, knowing your stuff, uh, okay, I've heard that comment. Um, planning very well, and I think conceptually women just do that. Uh, and knowing how to how to take good risk, not not to be reckless about it. And I, I, of course, you know, men can do that too, but I, I think women do it well. <laughs> so those are the comments I wanted to share today. And for anyone interested in learning more about that, please come to PMI NYC, look us up on the website. Uh, you'll find upcoming events. Uh, Frank can tell you more about those, their programs, and also communicate uh, through this forum or to, to, uh, to Frank Salatis after this forum, what types of events you're interested in, what, what types of areas you'd like to hear more about. And, and with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Frank. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Before before we uh, move on to to Karen, our next speaker, uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, Kathy Mark made a note. 
that said, and this relates back to something that you said a little bit earlier, uh, I would offer active listening and caution when speaking. Be aware of critical timing. And, and I think that that's really good advice uh, in, in no matter who you're speaking to, uh, especially when you're speaking with executives, that you, you need to listen very, very carefully and, and also uh, be aware of uh, the timing and, and what you have to say and get to the point. And, and you made that point clear earlier about the importance of listening. But the other thing is, before I let you go, um, in, in my experience in working with you, I wanted to point out to everyone two things that I, I, I saw that were worth mentioning. One was um, you are highly focused on a, the customer and you are very, very focused on supporting and protecting your team. You want to make a couple of comments on that? Ah, uh, yes. Well, but that goes back to understanding customer needs. It really does. So if you have a team, you need to understand their skill sets, what they can deliver. And also from the other side, understanding what they, what, what, what the ask is, what needs to be delivered. Um, and so I thought, I find it all comes back to understanding on both sides. It's the willingness to understand why a customer has asked for something. What is their pain point? And it's also hoping that the customer understands the level of effort it takes to deliver a solution for their pain point. It's that mutual understanding that gets us to the right solution. Uh, because often sometimes what happens, a customer can try to drive or steer the solution, not understanding that there are breakpoints, there, there are points of failure in the solution down the road that may have an adverse effect on their overall happiness. And so I, yes, I, I do work very hard to protect the team because we need to insulate them so they continue to feel motivated, strongly motivated to deliver a good solution. Uh, so working both sides of the street sometimes gets tiring, but it's a labor of love. Yes, I, I care about problems. Okay, yeah, and, and I, I've, I've, I've seen that, that uh, you are very team focused, you, you're very supportive of the team, you, you're, you're a very good listener, and, and, you, and you take the time to make sure that things are getting done right. So uh, thank you very much for, for, for being with us. I really appreciate your, your time. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring up our, our next speaker, which is, is Karen Tate. And Karen and I go uh, back in uh, PMI for several years. And uh, Karen uh, became a, a PMI fellow and, and just had a whole number of positions with, with PMI. Uh, she's a trainer, an educator, um, a person of, of extreme high energy. And I've, I've known Karen for, for quite a while. So Karen, um, I'd like to introduce you and have you say a few words to our, to our audience. Thank you, Frank. Um, I have to admit I was not paying attention to my calendar that it was Women's Day, so I didn't fulfill my assignment of sending a few slides. Frank, I did uh, get this one to you before it started, but I sent you two more. I don't know if you can bring those up. If not, it's okay. Um, did you, can you do that or should I just? Uh, I, if, if I do that, I have to go into my email and everybody uh, would see <laughs> you sending mind. me stuff. So, never mind, so. it's okay. Okay. I, didn't read it, I didn't read it carefully. I'm so sorry. Um, but I, uh, I can say that as far as do women lead differently, I, I think humans should all lead the same. And part of that is about listening and paying attention to what that other person needs and what role in your life that other person has. So as I get older, I, um, I find that the advice about what we should do as women in business, and I, I wore a bow tie at one point, you, so you had to look like a little man in a skirt. Um, Frank, you remember that, maybe nobody else does. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I would say today in today's world, uh, to go the opposite of all the advice we got in the 80s, I think it's all, it's, it doesn't apply anymore. We have a, a new environment, a new world, Lots of great young people with amazing energy and kindness. And I think it's just going to be great. Um, so 
going back to the top. Um, so Frank, thank you for inviting me. And it has been since 1997 that we met. And um, as you can see from my teeny little bio here, one of the things I've done a lot of is write, um, write books on project management. And I went to engineering school so I wouldn't have to write papers. Um, so it's a way of, I guess, the universe getting back to you. So uh, we first met in Chicago at the PMI uh, Seminars and Symposium. And I had just written the Project Management Memory Jogger, which has sold about a half a million copies since. And Frank got a copy of that and took it to the New York City chapter. And I heard from my co-author, who was at a PMI meeting, that Frank stood up and said, this is a pretty good book. You might want to look at it. And uh, so that got me launched into, you know, getting to know Frank much better. Um, so it was the most life-changing event of my business life. And that was that Chicago seminar for PMI. And I met some of the legendary leaders of PMI, people like Frank, who have been around for a long time. And I felt so grateful to be there and to meet those people. And I met people from New Zealand and Australia. And oh, the person from Australia that I met knew a guy that used to be our neighbor. So I realized what a small world it really was. And project management was the, uh, the way that that got me to see that. Um, so like Sarah, my background is in engineering and construction. Um, I grew up, my father worked in a factory. He worked two jobs so that I could go to college. I was the son he never had. Um, when I went to engineering school, I was one of 50 females in a class of over 600. So like many of you, I've, I've often been the only woman in, in the area. Um, my first job was at General Electric. I thought that was pretty cool because I learned a lot about corporate stuff and some best practices. And then I ended up at Kentucky Fried Chicken, which is now KFC. And I worked in the corporate construction and engineering office for new stores. Well, Church's Fried Chicken, Popeye's Fried Chicken, and lots of competition, Wendy's and others in the fast food business dropped sales dramatically and all of a sudden I was laid off after I had left GE for this job. Um, I went on a ski club trip, met a guy who worked for Bechtel, which is uh, one of the larger engineering and construction firms in the world. And I found that that was the job of my dreams and I didn't even know jobs like that existed at the time. So I was going from project to project assignment to assignment. And if you didn't like who you worked for, just hold your breath, you'll be working for somebody else later. So I thought this is so nice, like no matter what kind of a jerk happens to be around or how much I don't like the project, it'll be over soon. So I met my husband uh, before um, I was sent on my first three month out of town assignment, which was three months and one week before our wedding. Um, that was a problem because I knew those assignments weren't going to end. So um, I also married my husband because he didn't let me push him around, but he also didn't try to push me around. And I thought, this is pretty cool. I can be a strong woman and I don't have to worry about hurting feelings or whatever. Um, I had to convince my husband to leave his job and join Bechtel so we could live together in the same city and maybe even have children. So that worked out pretty well. They, uh, they hired him and we moved around for a few years with our children and then ended up having to leave because the moving around didn't stop and ended up working uh, locally here in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I live for um, a local firm who did a lot of projects for Procter & Gamble. Well, I knew that I loved projects, but I wanted something with a little more flexibility than working 10 hours a day. Um, P&G had hired a consultant to run a seminar to kick off the project we were managing for them on visioning. And it was to help us plan better for this project. Well, what I didn't know was that 
somebody who does that kind of work only works a couple days a week and then they have a lot of flexibility and they don't have to report to anybody. And I decided when I grow up, I want to be just like Gloria, who was the leader of the seminar. So I set my sights on that. Um, because I knew that was a really good goal to have if you have children um, and that you don't have to run off to work at seven in the morning before they even go to school. And so I decided that that's what I'd probably like to do. So I decided I would have a 10 or 15 year goal to do that. Um, I've always signed up for things I was afraid to do, like 31 zip lines in Costa Rica when I was afraid, afraid of the one at the local church women's group. Um, I volunteered for assignments and things I didn't know how to do, and I made myself learn how and do them so that I would have that experience. Um, what I didn't know is that was all in preparation for doing what I really wanted to do, which was to have my own business. And it sounds like it might be similar to Lisa's experience where um, I didn't just jump off the cliff. I imagined my way off of that corporate cliff. I decided I didn't like the politics, and on a long car trip, I told my husband in great detail I, every single aspect of what my life would be like when I had my own business. And then it happened within three months instead of 10 to 15 years. So um, I really liked when I heard her say that. That's like, yeah, put it out there and be careful. It might happen. Um, so... Why did I choose this profession? I wanted to be an astronaut, and I had a crush in the eighth grade on John Riegler. He was the ultimate geek with thick glasses and, you know, geeky hair, and he knew a lot about transistors and vacuum tubes, and I thought that was really cool. I was so interested in it, and I also thought he was pretty cute. Um, so I think because I was trying to get this boy to like me, I strengthened my interest in science and math. As far as um, a challenge that I overcame, you know, I look back on it and I, I think my life has been blessed and wonderful and I haven't had a lot of challenges. I have worked hard, but perhaps teenagers who you can't seem to convince that they ought to go to school and do their homework. That was probably the only crisis we had. But we did um, go th through some psychological counseling and that helped immensely. And now I have grandchildren and children and everybody's happy and professional. And I just, I live a blessed life. Um, advice, uh, as I said, be nice, be brave, be honest, be helpful, be responsible, be respectful. And these days, I think we need to protect and help those that we see in the workplace who are being pushed around and somehow help them make a difference. Um, it's a different, different world now than it used to be. I think we, we have to help each other a lot, not just women, but all people. That's uh, probably all the little bullet points you gave me, Frank. So I did my assignment. Okay, sounds really good. Uh, I, I actually been taking notes from from everybody, and uh, I'm going to try to summarize things as as we close up. Um, there was something that was brought up before, and and this will, if we have time, we'll, we can address it. But when we were talking about the uh, the challenges of of um, uh, w w whether or not uh, project management was a good career for women and, and so on. And uh, a comment came up says uh, that uh, project management is being challenged by agile purists who devalue the role and disciplines of project management. So uh, that's probably a, uh, a topic for another discussion, but, but uh, the career in project management is changing. Uh, PMI's sixth edition PMBOK uh, has now a section on the, uh, the uh, uh, agile uh, component and, and how important that is now. I think that the, the debate rages about whether to go agile or to stay traditional. And, um, you know, I think that uh, what we have to make sure we, we do is look at uh, that whether you're using a, a traditional waterfall type of approach to managing a project or using an agile, what you should do is pick the best methodology that works and that there shouldn't be, we shouldn't be fighting over these things. We should be finding ways to, to collaborate. So um, thank you very much for, for all the things that you said. Uh, key points, flexibility was a key item. 
Um, I thought the, what you said about your husband, managing lives together through collaboration, I thought that was pretty important. Uh, set a goal. Uh, and this other thing, do things that you are afraid to do. Learn how to do it. And then the other thing was imagine your way off the corporate cliff. And yeah, I guess use your imagination and, and set that goal and, and go and do something that you, uh, that you really love to do. And uh, the final thought that I, I thought was really key that you made was uh, about being nice, brave, honest. Um, I wrote down, protect others like yourself. Uh, you know, we are in a different kind of a world here, and I think that uh, we, have to, uh, we have to start to work with each other and protect each other, and I think that's really important. So, Karen, thank you very much. If you're around when we have a, maybe a few minutes for questions, uh, we'll come back to some of that. Uh, right now, what I'd like to do is to bring up uh, our next speaker, we have two more to go. We have uh, Yen Ping, and I'm going to bring her up right now. And then uh, Rose Hughes is going to close out. And then if there's time, we'll take a couple of questions. And uh, again, thank you all for being here. This has been uh, very, very, very valuable. So Yen Ping, I'm going to turn it over to you right now. Uh, yes. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for thank you, Frank, and. Uh, uh, Thank you for the invitation. Uh, honestly, I received the invitation yesterday, so uh, I attend this uh, webinar. It's more uh, feel I'm a, a learner rather than a panelist. Uh, so I learned a, a lot from the panelists uh, in front of me, and uh, here they are great story and very inspiring. And also, uh, Karen, and actually Karen and I, we are PMI colleague. Uh, honestly, Karen always the boss. And Karen has uh, not only husband and two sons. I know Karen always, uh, you know, the one in the family to say yes or no. And another thing is that uh, uh, Karen actually is my mentor. One of the things I want to see in the project management community and the mentor is very important. And when I was on the PMI board of director and I was signed as Karen's mentee and uh, I'm glad and uh, she's ahead of me as a panelist. Okay, uh, because we have a short time left, I want to say things uh, in three and uh, for my own personal experience in project management, I would say uh, I was a practitioner and I was a, a, a advocate and also I was an entrepreneur. So my bio is on the screen and that says what I have done. So one of the things as a woman, as a project manager or program, manager I found is very important. I'm going to name three. And the first is the sense of purpose and the passion. And if you know what you do, if you have passion about what you do, I'm sure you can do a great job. Whether you think you is a woman or include a man, and I think that's does not make a much difference. The sense of purpose and passion will make you a best program and a project manager among your peers. And the second thing is as a program and a project manager, I think it's very important and that we take a responsibility. And take responsibility, that means not only we are responsible for the errors, and also we take a responsibility for taking risk. Whether it's a program or project, there are always errors on the path. There are always risk. You have to assess. You have to say yes or no. And while you take a responsibility and do your best to give credit to others, when the project program became success and let the others or let your team member to take credit. And the third thing is uh, 
remember we, we are living in a cross-cultural environment. My own personal experiences uh, uh, taught me a lot. I came out of a culture which is totally different from this culture, which currently I'm living in, in the United States. I studied in China and worked in China and had my own accomplishment in China. And after I moved to America, I studied everything again and from beginning. So always pair yourself with the best people you can find. Always find someone, share the same goal, same passion, and the same love and you are with the best group. So I guess that's what I can say. And um, as far as personal experience, honestly, I really enjoy what I have done. And just because of all those things I mentioned above, um, I, I have to say the years ahead of us and the woman will play a great role and all the movement around us. And also even today's uh, uh, panelists, you, you, you can say it. almost every one of those women and they are entrepreneurs to begin with. And they dare to take a risk. They love what they do. So that's why those wonderful women can accomplish that's all I can say, Frank. Okay, well, uh, Yan Ping, uh, thank you very much. A couple of things, uh, again, I had to take some notes here. Um, key points, number one is mentor. And I think that's important for everyone. Get yourself a mentor. And uh, if you can, if you look back at the speakers that we've had so far, and we have Rose coming up, um, these are, are, are excellent examples of, of, of mentors that, or the type of mentor that, that, that anyone would want, man, man or woman. Uh, look at all the accomplishments and the experience. If, if you look at Yan Ping's uh, chart there, you know, PhD in public policy, MA in science technology, we're talking about amazing accomplishments, plus doing a number of things for the Project Management Institute and, and making a great contribution uh, to the profession of project management. Um, Yan Ping said, take responsibility. And I, I think that today's project managers really, really have to do that, um, that you have to show that sense of purpose. And the one thing that uh, I, I didn't realize at first, and, and, and Yan Ping brought this up, is that uh, she said cross-cultural environment, our speakers, uh, we have a very diverse background of, of, of these these women speakers in, in project management, which is, you know, I'm, I'm excited by this. This this is really a, a last minute kind of a, a an attempt to to recognize the connection between women in business and women in project management, and uh, I, I think we've we've greatly succeeded all of that. And and Yan Ping, one more thing you said, um, being an entrepreneur, that's the key. So I, I thank you very much for your time. And I'm going to uh, bring R Rose up uh, as our final speaker. And then they're probably just going to be a couple of minutes for some questions. But um, let me bring up Rose and uh, get the, our last presentation completed. And then if there's time for questions, that would be great. So let me see if I can find. Um, there we are. OK. It's all about perspective, right, Rose? Yes, it is. And. Um... I am definitely bringing some perspective to this particular uh, uh, webinar because I am coming, I've only had 10 years of experience uh, in project management, whereas a lot of the wonderful women here have had much more t time and experience. I am honored to be a part of this. Um, when I graduated with my bachelor's in 2003, um, I or 2007, I'm sorry, uh, it was the height of the uh, recession here in the United States. I'm currently located in Cleveland, Ohio, and it was very difficult for someone fresh out of college uh, to actually find something. I ended up becoming somewhat of a jack of all trades over the course of the, the, these past 10 years, 
uh, learning different things about technology, higher education, financial districts. I ended up uh, finding a job. The only place that was hiring was a community college in Cleveland, Ohio, and kind of stumbled into project management. I didn't even realize what I was doing was what I was doing. Uh, my first day on the job when I accepted the full-time position was to go across the street to Office Depot and get a pad of paper and a pen because the computers weren't even installed at that point. They were just installing a new campus for the first time in 40 years and I was the supervisor ad hoc project manager on site making sure that over 20 million in technology was actually being installed in the correct location. Um, so I was a very low level project manager on that particular project. Um, when I first came on, I was in my 20s trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, mostly male environment, trying to figure out who, what, when, and where everything was going on. I had very descriptive uh, job titles from the men that I was working with. Um, I was the um, B word at that location, uh, the queen of all things. Um, oh no, here comes Rose, you better get, you know, get whatever she needs done. And it, I'm a sweetheart. It's just, for some reason, I was the queen of terror on everything else. And that was just the perspectives that they had about me even before I came online. So what I ended up doing, I've uh, was tried to build a team locally as well as interact with people at the higher level. Ended up hiring over 20, uh, 200 people over the course of five years and then ended up turning around and uh, was laid off after about five years in getting that location up and running and, as well as doing normal operations. And then after that, I did a stint with uh, KeyBank, working with them on when they did a uh, merger with another bank, then moved over to what I'm doing right now with a startup that's based out of Silicon Valley. Uh, the branch that I'm connected with is in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I am working remote, but at the moment, because I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, Scottsdale, Arizona sounds wonderful, but I digress. So from my perspective and working with all these different people and having all these really unique, challenging nicknames, I've, I keep going back to how we used to do things in my family during when there was family gifts being given. Um, our big trend in my family is to wrap it in the comics. Uh, rather than actually use wrapping paper. One, because it was a lot more fun to kids under the age of eight. And two, it was because you're just going to tear it apart anyway. Why should I even bother getting new? So slightly lazy, but not quite. I don't know how prevalent it was in the United States at the time, but from my small neck of the woods, this was our thing. But the as a project manager, I've found that it's all about the box that you've been given. It's not necessarily everything that's in that box that's important, but actually what you, how that's being perceived by others. Some people see, um, you know, the Garfield comics on the left side of the box. The other people are looking at um, Calvert, Calvin and Hobbes. You know, there's always unique features that everyone has and how that's interpreted can lead to miscommunications. If you could go to the next slide, Frank. So when you're looking at different viewpoints, I'm sure everyone's seen this in social media where some people are looking at a six, some people are looking at a nine. And when you're dealing with such a large project, um, such as 20 million in technology being rolled out and five different variations of plans that you have to find which plan was the right plan when this piece was ordered. 
um, it makes sense to understand the people that you're working with. Not so much that who they are culturally, not so much because of who they are, because of their gender, it's what perspective that they're actually bringing to the table. Because if they're looking at design four and I'm looking at design five, we're completely befuddled and everybody's saying the right thing, but it's not on the same page. It also helps to understand what groups with being in IT and in working with some healthcare folks and working in financials, I can almost tell you who was a person that was a land specialist or someone who was working help desk just by talking to them for about five minutes because of the personalities that typically gravitate to those particular areas. Now, it's not, there are exceptions to every rule, but from a perspective, project management standpoint, understanding who they are helps me communicate better with, with them. The thing that a lot of people don't know when they look at me is that I'm hard of hearing. Um, have been since I've been about three years old. Um, nothing really major happened. It's just how I was born. So when a lot of projects roll out, I make sure that I make that people understand, hey, if I'm walking across the street and you say, hi, Rose, and I don't hear you, it's not because, or I don't respond, it's not because I hate your guts. I've had a lot of miscommunications be just simply because they perceived that I hated their guts simply because I didn't respond with the way they wanted to. Um, if you could go to the next slide, Frank. The What's helped immensely is being able to be that open with everyone. Um, yes, I can be perfectionist. Yes, I can be um, try to get everything in the order, but I know that as a project manager, I hold just one piece to the puzzle. If I can engage them on their strengths or engage the team on something that they're interested in, even if the project is something that they hate, they will still be engaged because I engaged with them on a personal level. Um, my background being hard of hearing, I've learned how to read the situation, read a person, understand you know the body language, the facial expressions, and be because I've I'm curious enough, I can follow up and figure out if hey. Are we on the same page? Did I offend you? Just have that conversation to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, the one thing that has helped in learning about other people, especially if they're brand new and I, I'm not quite sure who who everyone is, I like offering um, a personality test to everyone. I found a very free um, website, uh, 31 Personalities. Dot com that I use on a regular basis just to see what kind of personality I'm dealing with and how to interact with them. If they don't know, then, you know, everybody's into this INTG, uh, INTF, or all those different things, but sometimes people don't really understand. So in in bringing a new crew together, especially if they've never worked with each other before, just take, taking that time to understand each other allows us to help each other um, communicate in the future to finish out what's going on. Um, I signed on with this particular uh, webinar because I, I I'm one of the few people that I've ever seen. I don't see a lot of young uh, young faces at a lot of the PMI meetings that I've gone to, mostly probably because they're like me working 10 hours a day. The other side is we don't normally see a lot of people with a quote disability um, or hard of hearing or even anything disability really in terms of project management, um, people actually doing it, at least not in my area or at least what I have access to. I most people that I've worked with have been in their mid-career or almost retirement, and they seem very competent in what they do. So I wanted to be very, I wanted to be able to show that yes, there are some new faces coming up, 
and to give back to those who have gone on before and say, hey, thank you for the time that you guys have done and moving things forward. Um, I, I'm so thankful that I have not had the need to actually wear a bow tie, but um, I also look forward to expanding the PMI influence as well. So thank you very much for having me here and part of this great group. Well, Rose, thank you very much. Uh, you were the first person to actually respond when I was looking for, for speakers. And uh, when I put the uh, speaker list together, I just randomly selected people. So I'm, I'm glad you uh, you closed out the session. Uh, I, I kind of like, let me go backwards a little bit here. Uh, no bow tie needed anymore. Uh, Karen brought that up. And, and I think that that might have been a big issue way back when, but today, um, like uh, Karen said, and a few other other speakers said, you know, it is a different world right now. Um, you also brought up something that uh, is is really key for everyone, uh, and and I'm probably not going to state this exactly the right way, but the one thing is that you realized that you had something that you had to overcome, and and my comment was overcome your personal issues, find a way around it, you can still be successful. Um, so that's an important thing that you know all of us uh, probably have some something going on that uh, we need to work on a little bit more, whether it's a, a physical issue or something else. Uh, but if we if we address it, we accept it, and then we find a way to work with it, uh, we can be successful. Um, you also mentioned a couple of different things, which I thought was important. The uh, personality test. We as project managers uh, are dealing with multiple personalities and, uh, you know, I even do a program called Managing Difficult Stakeholders and, and we have a lot of people out there that um, unfortunately don't subscribe to the many values that these speakers during this session actually talked about. So we do have to uh, work through those personalities and try to overcome them the best that we can. Um, and you also said something that I'm going to start to do and it says, uh, use the comic comics for wrapping paper, and I think that that really uh, that makes it more fun. And you reminded me of something else, and this is to get uh, creative. And I, Lisa mentioned uh, that um, that saying, you know, thinking out of the box. Most people who are in uh, the creative business, whether it be people who teach creativity and help people to be creative, do not like to use that term. Okay, it's kind of an overused term, and, and there are a lot of, you know, basically de definitions and explanations behind that. But you have to use your imagination. You have to be creative. You have to get out there and take some risks and, and so on. But I, I, I met with a, a keynote speaker uh, not too long ago, and he, he was more of a comic type of a keynote, and he talked about communications. But when you uh, brought up the, uh, the, comic, the comics for the present, um, he said when he's going to a, a a presentation somewhere, he usually ships a box of things in advance. And when he ships the box, he always puts a big picture of himself on that box before it gets shipped. And he said, you'd be really surprised and interested to see how that picture is transformed during the uh, its journey from one place to another. And the reason that he put the picture on it was because when he would go to the hotel, and people, he would say, uh, you have a package for me. They would immediately recognize him and say, oh, yeah, you are the guy on the box. So I just thought that was a very creative way to make sure that your stuff gets to you. It kind of just triggered that little story. Anyway, uh, we ran over a little bit, and uh, there's a whole bunch of, of comments and questions and things like that, and I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, but we are going to close out. I'm just going to read a couple of things. Uh, Kimberly said that she agrees with the comment. It says, I agree with the comment about IT not necessarily appreciating the business side. So those of you that have some IT background, you may want to start thinking about how you're going to do a better job connecting with the business. Okay, um, let's see if there's any other comments here coming up. Uh, Karen says, exactly, I don't think there is a difference. I am not wearing a skirt. Um, Karen, I'm not. I think that that's dealing with the uh, the, the leadership issue. Uh, is that something that you were t talking about there? Okay, we may have lost uh, uh, Karen. But anyway, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to put together all of these slides, 
Uh, Kevin says you got to own your own brand. Kevin and I go back a long ways also, and we're all talking, always talking about your personal brand, brand recognition, and so on. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the conference. And I'm just going to put up uh, the f final slide here, those of you that are interested in uh, PDUs. Uh, the PDUs would be self-awarded uh, for this particular session. Uh, we don't have a mechanism to, to set that up uh, automatically right now, but in the future we'll be able to do that. But this is a Category B continuing education uh, P uh, program. Uh, it's entitled, the, the we it's a webinar, Women in Project Management, Perspectives about Success as a Project Manager, and provided through the PMI New York City chapter and uh, my company, Blue Marble uh, Enterprises, we set up the, uh, the webinar. If you have any questions, comments, or uh, anything you'd like to add about this particular program, uh, send it to uh, frank.salatis at pminyc.org. And what I'd really like to do is, again, thank Sarah, Renee, Lisa, Yael, Karen, Yangping, and Rose for taking the time to put this together on relatively short notice. I think that I'd like to do this again, uh, and we'll plan it out a little bit differently. Uh, again, uh, thank you to all of the uh, project managers that are out there, especially all the women project managers. Um, you've got some great advice. Um, basically, be tenacious. Uh, Lisa said, make things simple. A plan will do that. Okay, anticipate needs. Take good risks, but take risks, as Sarah said. Uh, focus on your customers. Support your team. Uh, overcome your personal issues. Deal with personalities. Be honest, brave, sincere, respectful. Um, protect other people like yourself. Become a mentor or seek a mentor. Set goals and do things that you're afraid to do. Learn how to do it and then excel at it. And uh, as Karen said, imagine your way off the corporate cliff, use your imagination and, 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 and reach the goals that you're looking for. So uh, with that, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it that this webinar is being recorded and we'll get this posted so that you can actually go back and view it. Um, <clears throat> there were questions about the slides and I will check with each of the speakers to make sure which slides can actually be shared and then we'll set up a, a, a deck that could be made available if you're interested. So with that, I thank you all very much. I appreciate it, enjoy the day. And um, I, don't, I don't think you should say happy women in, uh, in International Women's Day, but congratulations to all of you for your successes. Um, provide us with feedback. If you're in the New York City area, please come to a New York City chapter meeting or send comments to me so that we can do programs that are going to meet your needs. The, um, the emphasis today is on skills development and professional development, and uh, we intend to do that. So with that, I thank you very much. I appreciate it, and uh, take care, everyone. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Okay, if there's anybody still on the call here, uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up in a second, but I thought you might be interested in this slide here. This was a um, Hi there. survey um, done. My name is Karen yeah. Tate, and I believe Jim is coming out to my uh, place today to take some pictures for Design to Market. Do you happen to know his schedule? Because I don't know exactly what time he's coming. Are you talking about Jim Snyder? Yeah, it's 2200 Vic. Victory Parkway, it's the Edge Cliff. Thank you.